Namaste one and all. Welcome you all to the next presentation in the series on National Education Policy 2020. And today in this presentation, I would like to present on National Education Policy 2020 and Higher Education. So the concept, so the concept of that NEP 2020, the imaginative and flexible curricular structures for a multiple entry and exit points that removing currently prevalent rigid boundaries and creating new possibilities for lifelong learning. So that's the concept put forth by the NEP 2020 for higher education. So it's a most promising uh, aspect of this concept in point of view of students is that it proposes a multiple entry and exit point for students. Then the vision for higher education, vision for higher education according to this NEP is to develop a multidisciplinary ecosystem of higher education for of international standards. So that's the first uh, vision to develop a multidisciplinary system with international standards and to provide autonomy at institutional as well as faculty levels. Then a single a regulatory body for higher education at national level and it envisions India as a hub of education for international students and establishment of more higher education institutions in underserved areas promote both public and private institutions and open distance learning systems are coming towards mainstream. They are already came by the pandemic, but this uh, policy envisions that mainstreaming of this uh, ODL system. Then the structural reforms, the policy proposes structural uh, reforms in higher education institutions. The most comprehensive uh, reform is that all higher education institution shall be transformed into a multidisciplinary nature and it should be should become a large so large multidisciplinary universities and higher education institution cultures clusters that's a, a proposal for the, the vision of the policy so large in the sense diversity in subjects as well as large in volume of students so the number of students from hundreds to thousands so such kind of an enhancement of higher education institutions is planned and both the undergraduate and postgraduate pro program should be run at university level. And that's another structural change. So the university should be developed in such a way to provide undergraduate education as well. And there will be an ending of affiliating system of colleges. Now, most universities are affiliating universities. So the policy plan to end that system and categorize all higher education institutions into three. The first category research intensive universities, then teaching intensive universities, autonomous degree granting colleges. And uh, regarding the third category, the colleges uh, shall be primarily handling undergraduate courses only. And the period of evolution proposes in the policy 
is 20 years. So by 2040, all the institutions at present shall be in any of these three categories under it can uh, either the colleges should become at uh, the state of status of autonomous colleges or a teaching intensive university or a research intensive university and there shall be a large higher education institution because an institution with enormous number of thousands of students in every district of the nation. That's another uh, structural change, establishment of new large institutions or expansion of the existing institutions. Then blending of ODL program with the in-class programs. That's another uh, structural uh, reform proposed in the policy. And let us have a look at the administrative reforms. So there is a four aspects or four pillars of administration. Though there is a single uh, regulatory body at national level, Higher Education Commission of India, and this commission is get supported by four pillars such as regulation, accreditation, funding, and standards. So, National Higher Education Regulation Council provide prepare a regulation for all higher education institution except for medicine and law. Then National Accreditation Council for accrediting higher education institutions. Then Higher Education Grant Council for funding based on institutional development plans. So each institutions are supposed to prepare a comprehensive institutional development plan only on the basis of which necessary funding will be available and which is provided by Higher Education Grants Council. And the fourth pillar, General Education Council. And this GEC set standards as graduated attributes. These are the expected outcomes uh, of students. So what should be the standard of such uh, outcome? that will be stated by GEC. So these are the four uh, pillars uh, proposed in the administrative reforms for regulation, accreditation, funding and standards. And under the GEC, the National Higher Education Qualification Framework and this uh, framework will synchronize with National Vocation Qualification Framework for vocational education integration with higher education. So, it also is an administrative change. Now, the vocational education is a separate stream and the policy plan to integrate both higher education and vocational education. So, the reforms in the curricular areas. The policy formulates, proposes flexible and innovative curricula and this curricula shall include credit based courses as well as projects and uh, four areas uh, proposed in the policy focus areas such as community engagement and service, environmental education and value based education. Then provision for internship in respective fields or industry. So the linking of field with the uh, education institution is another uh, reform proposed in curricula. Then program reforms. So the there is a major uh, change in the structure of programs such as uh, the UG program, a uh, three year program usually. The programs are retained, but a four-year program uh, is proposed. And what is the advantage of this program is it proposes multiple exit points. So it's a great boon for uh, students. At present, uh, if some of them 
uh, must uh, fit the program in the middle they did not get any credit of that program or completed courses or completed year or semester like that so this uh, policy try to address that issue a major student issue and uh, they provide multiple exit points for students so a uh, 3 to 4 year uh, ug 1 to 2 year pg and the second year is exclusively for uh, research in a PG program for three year undergraduate students and the fourth year in undergraduation also will be set apart for rigorous research and an academic bank of credits ABC is proposed so in this ABC the credits of acquired by students will be deposited and they can continue their studies or you can use their credits when they rejoin to complete their studies then for phd ug pg and phd the qualification for phd there also is a change a four year undergraduate qualified candidate can join for phd or as in the existing uh, eligibility a three year ug plus two year pg so that also is a an advantage for students uh, by four year uh, UG they can join for a PhD course then phasing out of MPhil so MPhil shall be discontinued in uh, remote past because uh, after 1993 the exemption for uh, net eligibility was not extended and now it is no more a qualification for any such teaching positions so uh, that phasing out of mphil course then a shift from semester based assessment grading system to a criterion based grading system so a credit based to criterion based grading system is proposed that also is a major uh, reform because it requires so much uh, preparations because it uh, heavily affected the system of assessment so the criterion based grading system is proposed thorough planning is necessary then integration of vocational education so about 50 percent of students should get an opportunity to exposure to vocational education by 2025 so i think this is the this uh, target is the nearest one by within these five years the students in higher education as well as in schools should have an opportunity to uh, attain vocational education then in reforms in research national research foundation for competitive funding while all other existing funding agencies will continue so there is a new agency for research funding then a national mission for mentoring is planned proposed by constituted by incorporating retired and eminent faculty in india and outside then prioritization of research towards national and rural development and the nrf will national research foundation will fund for such uh, priority area research then governance reforms all higher education institutions by 2035 will aim to be independent and self-governing so that's another target it is in the line of accreditation so within the period of 15 years all such higher education institutions shall develop into uh, independent and self-governing institutions so thanks for watching thank you very much